chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. And suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw and they looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each and every person there. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. And there were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. And when they heard the noise, a large crowd had gathered. They were all excited because all of them heard the believers talking in their own languages. In amazement and wondered, and they exclaimed, These people who are talking like this are Galileans? How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own native languages? We are from Parthia, Medea, Elam, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontus in Asia from Perthrachia and Pamphylia, and from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles, converted to Judaism, and some of us are from Crete and Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers, saying, These people are drunk. Then Peter stood up with the eleven apostles, and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Instead, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. This is what I will do in the last days, God says. I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will proclaim my message. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will have dreams. Yes, even my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will proclaim my message. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on earth below. There will be blood, fire, and thick smoke. The sun will be darkened and the moon will turn red as blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then whoever calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. Our second reading comes from Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 13. Love is eternal. There are inspired messages, but they are temporary. There are gifts of speaking in strange tongues, but they will cease. There is knowledge, but it will pass. For our gifts of knowledge and of inspired messages are only partial. But when what is perfect comes, then what is partial will disappear. When I was a child, my speech, feelings, and thinking were all those of a child. Now that I am an adult, I have no use for childish ways. What we see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What I know now is only partial. Then it will be complete, as complete as God's knowledge of me. Meanwhile, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is... Holy wisdom, holy word. Thank you. Pentecost was one of three major holidays to the Jewish people. Passover, Yom Kippur, Pentecost. This particular Pentecost followed after Jesus had died, risen, visited here on earth, did preaching, and then went to God in heaven. It would have felt somewhat awkward, right? The holidays had passed, the great experience happened. Jesus wasn't what we had hoped. We still have taxes to pay in Rome. The Roman soldiers still mock us, they still make fun of us. 
Our families are still being sold into slavery. We know at that time, six out of 10 people were malnourished. We can just tell that from their bones. So they didn't know where their next meal was always coming. These people were downtrodden, and yet they were firm, and they stuck to tradition. And tradition would have been coming for Pentecost. They might have put on the same clothes, prepared the same foods, not sure what to expect. And even as they came to celebrate Pentecost, Though they might be Jewish, due to lack of income, money, and resources, they all didn't speak the same language. But they were coming to love the same God. They came that day. I don't know what they were expecting. My guess is just like any of you. Every Sunday you get dressed and you pretty much expect the same old same old. But they didn't get the same old same old. Something and it was so wondrous that people from around the world could no longer deny that God was at work in their world. It was amazing. It would have been miraculous. Colonialism 101 tells you, so this is why in South Africa, this is what they did. The best way to keep your enemies or people beaten down or downtrodden is to keep them separated and not speaking the same languages, right? So this community can't talk to this community, and this community can't talk to this community. And when somebody's trying to spread hate, isn't one of the easiest ways to spread hate is be like, they don't even speak your language, you should hate them, right? That's kind of the easiest way. And so Rome was able to kind of, as it went out into the known world at that time, they went up into parts of Europe, down to Egypt. As they spread out in Asia, as Rome was a growing empire, they could kind of control. And we learned that specifically with King Herod. Remember, King Herod is the evil king when Jesus was born. Herod was both a Jew and a Roman. So if you played the game right, if you did what the Romans told you to do, if you were evil and corrupt, and you rose up the rank of power, you, you could be okay. Uh, but if you really wanted to love somebody different than you, you really wanted to be different, you really wanted to be kindness, Rome wasn't going to have that. <laughs> Rome had slavery. You could sell your child into slavery. Rome could just come and take your children. The Emperor could walk through and just say, I want that daughter, and I want this, and I want that. And whatever Rome got, wanted, they got. <coughs> and so they could kind of keep people against people. And the funny thing about hate in communities is it's far easier to hate somebody that you have a little bit of control and power with than it is to hate somebody that you have no control and power with. It's an ego game. That kind of happens a little bit today. It's the same old game playing in the same type of politics. Politicians get away with more, get the best tax breaks, if you and I are fighting with our neighbors. If we're squabbling over little things, they, they have this big kind of show that we just don't have time or attention for. And Rome knew this. So in the midst of this chaos and this tension, in the midst of brokenness, in the midst of starvation, in the midst of lack of human rights, in the midst of all of this, what does our loving God send them to start the church with? What gift? It's not the gift they wanted. <laughs> I promise you that. Like, if I was in their shoes, the gift I might want would be just from any teenager watching Marvel Studios, or my family loves those, the gift would be like the golden globe one, right? If I put down a globe, nobody gets hurt, and I can extend the globe, right? That would be the cool gift. Um, another cool gift would have been from God would have been uh, flying. So if Rome got a little crazy, you could just fly out, make your friends fly out. So you didn't get Superman gift. You didn't get walking on water gift, although we tried. Uh, we didn't get a weapon, right? We didn't get a gun. We, we didn't get any of that. We got the gift to listen to each other, to hear what is saying in our neighbor's heart. And it was more than just talking. It was more than a language interpretation. It warmed their heart, right? So 
the earliest apostles were very clear about that. It warmed their heart. Now, you Methodist, who had a strange, warm heart feeling? Julie said it. John Wesley! He, although he grew up a Christian his whole life, he had a strange, warm heart. Something came inside of him. Something he could no longer deny. Something that would change the course of his life and others to follow. And that strange warmness of feeling we ask for today. Corinthians was honest. It said, these gifts speaking in strange tongues, they will cease. And he was right. It is very rare, it, and if done properly, even more so. But does that mean we shouldn't be listening to one another? Does that mean we shouldn't try talking to our neighbors that look different from us? Does that mean we should put ourselves on a pedestal? Does that mean we should squabble with our neighbor over beans and rice? We're still supposed to be working into that gift. And if any of you have ever been blessed with a friend who spoke English as a second language, and you go and you get to know this friend more and more, after some time, you pick up their language, right? And you pick up their cues, and you understand them better than anybody else in the room. It's a true gift of friendship. And in that way, God finds love with all of you. We worship a loving God, a consistent, loving God. It doesn't mean we're not going to be mocked. So if we go down this path and we let that warmness of our heart take over and we truly do adapt, it doesn't mean you're, you're not going to get made fun of. People aren't going to say you're delusional or you've joined a cult or you're drunk at 9 a.m. It's going to happen. That's kind of how free will works. But we're called to do more. We're called to take the high road, to work harder, to do better. We're called to love the hard to love. We are not called to hate somebody because they were born somewhere else. We are not called to hate somebody because they look different. Made me think a little bit of JoLynn's bumper sticker that I love. Idaho is too pretty for hate, right? We are called to rise above. It's not an easy path. Easy people pick the hate road. Easy people pick the war road. It is much harder to be a peacemaker than it is to be one starting wars. But who does the peacemaker inherit? What do they get? The kingdom of heaven. It is a hard road. And it's not simple, and it wasn't simple then, and it's not simple now. But we are no less called to this path of love. For Jesus made it very clear the two greatest commandments were to love your God and love your neighbor. So here this Holy Spirit comes and he equips us with the one gift. In science, they're doing this thing called artificial intelligence. Have you heard that? And the one thing they cannot pin down, and I'm not saying it never, is artificial intelligence has a hard time communicating in the same way that we humans do. Now, they can make an artificial intelligence voice replicate. So, like, let's say, you know, let's say they're trying to frame Kevin for, we'll just use Kevin, for robbing a bank, right? They can take Kevin's voice, use enough of his words, and make it sound like he robbed a bank, right? We know they're going to get there. But, for, let's say, you to have a conversation with Kevin, it doesn't work out. Right? They can't get that humanness, that intentional listening, that responsiveness, the warming of the heart, the soul piece figured out. Now, it doesn't mean that kids don't get addicted to technology or this or that, because that happens. But what are they really needing? What are they really lonely for? Love and attention. And that's the gift we can give. It's not an easy road. It's not going to make you popular. 
but it is the one we are called to do as a church. We as a church, we might get it wrong. For a long time there, the Christian church at that time, which was Catholic, insisted that only one language be spoken in every church. Latin, right? And then you Protestants wouldn't change the game again. But did we really, or did we just go back to our roots? Our original Christian roots of learning to speak multiple languages, of letting brothers and sisters share the good news. Isn't that the roots where we're from? My prayer for you all in this Pentecost. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> did, did the Holy Spirit give this gift to the pastors or to the people? The people. You guys matter in this message. You are called to share the good news. I can't do it alone, and if it was just on me, I'd fail. <coughs> you guys, this is up to you. Spend time with your neighbor, loving them, caring for them. Give them the one thing science can't give them. Give them the one thing your God told you to give your neighbor. Love. Listen. Respect. Care. Love. Amen? Amen. Amen.